Hard determinism seems, and correct me if I'm wrong here, if anyone wants to, seems to say that um, whatever we are is simply a function of what has come before us. We are the result of something. We are not a cause of anything. Um, again, I, if I'm strawmanning anybody, feel free to correct me. Now, the objection that I have been sort of putting forward here is the will. Why is it that I desire things? In other words, how does a feeling in my stomach equate or become the desire to actually eat? Um, especially when I've got more than enough food already. Why do we have so many people who eat too much to the point where it's unhealthy for them? Um, it looks to me as though we have hungers and we have appetites, and they're not quite the same thing, and we don't quite we don't seem to quite understand the distinction between the two. And I think also our Grossly speaking, in the general way, I think most of our view of views of Darwin, natural selection, evolution, etc., which is implicit in determinism as well, uh, is based upon the idea that survival is an end in itself, the will to life, right, Schopenhauer. Well, okay, but that's the will to life. That means that there's something else out there besides blind mechanics. Life seeks to preserve itself. Now, the question arises, can you seek blindly or can you seek consciously? I think you can kind of do both. You can abstract the future and sort of do things to make what your projected future is going to be to be in whatever the present is going to become. But you can also seek things that you're not quite sure why. As I say, consumer capitalism seems to work on that exact premise. You think you want something, then once you get it, you realize you never wanted it in the first place. But when you pare it right down to its essentials, apparently we all really want to survive, and the Buddhists will tell us that, and the Jains especially, that that's really the um, fly in the ointment of existence, is this desire to perpetuate ourselves or this desire even to perpetuate existence itself. <clears throat> okay, how do you fit that? How do you fit the will to life into a deterministic conception of the universe? I don't think you can force something to want to do something. We can create the most elaborate computer imaginable um, and w first of all we would never really know whether or not it truly wanted to live or to perpetuate itself like say Hal or you know the replicants or something like that from um, 2001 or Blade Runner. <clears throat> we wouldn't know. Um, all we would get back is what we fed into these things to sort of, they would say, we want to live because we programmed them to say that and to act that way in ways that we impute to them. How would we know fundamentally if they actually did want this or were just saying so? Same is true for all machines, right? Um, do machines have souls? Um... I don't know, and I don't know if they ever will, and I don't know if we ever will be able to know whether or not they'll have souls, even if we make the ultimate, most sophisticated machine imaginable. We don't know. But we assume that the will to life exists. It, as I say, it's heavily implicit in everything um, that, at least as far as pop science goes, uh, everything that informs our thinking. We believe that survival is an end in itself. Watch any nature show, and it all says this. Um, this species has involved this or that attribute in order to allow it to survive. It's peculiar or harsh or um, varied environment. That's 
to me, that's such a misreading of natural selection as to sort of beggar belief, but it seems to be the most common one. Um, but there's a germ of interest in there because it says, again, it underlines the idea that survival, passing on one's DNA, the selfish gene, is an end in itself. That's more than blind mechanics. That's not just falling dominoes. That's something that's self-aware and seeks its own perpetuation and its own existence. Not because it is simply a reaction. It actually wants to exist. Determinism and that simply don't mix. At least hard determinism and the will to life. And I'm not even saying that I necessarily um, subscribe to the will to life, at least as the ultimate explanation of everything. I think there are many different wills out there. But I'm just using the example of the will to life, which informs all of our thinking on evolution, or at least in a general sense it does. Um, I'm not saying even that determinism is bogus here, but a certain mechanistic hard determinism, yes, I think that that's a bit a bit much.